some mystery surrounding the fate of the Schiaparelli robot after its signal was lost shortly before it was due to land on Mars. Yes, the European Space Agency is expected to give further details later this morning about what happened to the probe. Let's see if we can shed some light on it now. Dr Annie Welbrock, uh, who's a planetary scientist at University College London, is with us. A as it stands right now, Annie, we, we don't know what happened, do we? We don't know, really. We have some engineering data from the descend phase, so we know it woke up as planned but we just don't have any data from the touchdown, so we don't have any scientific data yet. Just talk us through that, that the, the bit of the journey we know. So it, it, sure. it was dropping down. So we think we know that the parachute deployed at the right time. Um, that's not confirmed yet from the engineering data, but we think we know that. Then it would have jettisoned the parachute and the thrusters would have come on to um, control the attitude. And then at just two metres above the ground, it would have dropped to the to the ground, so they would have turned off the thrusters and it would have been cushioned by this, um, this crushable uh, structure. Um, so something might have gone wrong um, during that last phase of the descent, possibly, but we don't know yet. So, so without signal at the moment, what are you going to lose out on in terms of science and data? Um, we'll probably lose out on what's, what it was planned to do next. So it was, it was, it's supposed to be a, a bit of a weather station, so it would record like the temperature, the humidity of the atmosphere, things like that. But we do have the engineering data, probably, so we can analyse what's gone wrong, we can learn from it. And it was a technology mission, so that was the main, sort of the main part of the, the purpose of it. Mm. It was a technology demonstrator, technology test. So now, what's the plan with the scientists? I mean, you, uh, have you got any choice other than to just wait and see? We will wait and see, yeah. But remember, there's also the orbiter, which is actually the main part of the mission, and it's a science mission. So it's really exciting because it's going to look for life. Um, so it's going to look for traces of methane, which is actually an indicator of possible life on, on Mars. So we know that there is some methane in the atmosphere, but we don't know what the source is. And the source could be geological, so like thermal vents or something like that, or it could be biological, so it could be microorganisms that are um, sort of, like, it's a bit like digesting food, but of course they don't have a stomach, so it, there might be a source. Yeah, of, that's a, it's a very silly question to ask, why, though, why don't they take two probes up so they ha can have a second go? They will actually have a second go. I mean, it's expensive. Um, yeah. That's the main it's cost. reason. It's just yeah, cost. but there is a second part of the mission in 2020. So that's a, a rover, actually. So that's a big science mission. The first one was a technology mission ma mainly, but the second one is a science mission. So we'll actually drill into the ground and look for life under the surface, because on the surface, the environment, the radiation environment, is a bit harsh. Okay. Well, we find out more hopefully later hopefully, on this morning. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll keep our fingers crossed for that. It is time to get the news, travel and weather back here on Earth, where you are. We'll see you soon.